I'm uh, live uh, here uh, in the studio with uh, Mark uh, Goldberg, he is the legal counsel for Houston First Corporation and a uh, former city council member. Mark, uh, good morning. Uh, um, thank you for coming live uh, on PBC TV network. Uh, we are doing a documentary on Harris County Appraisal District and I understand that you have a lot of experience uh, in uh, fighting your properties. Uh, do you fight the properties, uh, values of the properties for the city also or just only um, uh, for your own or your clients? Give me a little of your background, you know, what you kind of uh, uh, fight you had it in several years in the past. Well, um, for a long time now, uh, for at least 10 or 12 years, I hired a company to do it, uh, O'Connor Associates, and so lately the uh, the work they do in protesting um, my appraisals was really poor, poor work, and so I decided this year for the first time I would go down there and do it myself, um, and it was in incredibly easy. As a matter of fact, I had more than one property, and they were willing to set up a time and date for all the properties so I could handle it at one time. You know, that was one good thing. Me too. I have got about 20 of them, and I, when I fight it, they do it uh, uh, 20 at a time, but uh, sometimes it's an advantage, sometimes it's not advantage. If you got a wrong guy you are dealing with, you get nothing. But if you got a good guy, you get a very good deal. So <laughs> that, That's true, but yeah. it's, uh, it's a panel of three, and um, but um, you're, you're right. Uh, if you get a, a, a difficult panel, then you might lose on all of them, but I find that they uh, try to be pretty fair and if it, 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 I don't think it's a chance that they'll go against you on all of them. I think, um, as a matter of fact, it encourages them if they say no to your challenge, to your protest, that you know, eventually on some of the properties they, they're going to say yes just to give you a win. But generally the people are saying, the people I'm interviewing, they are saying it's more of like a number game. You know, you go there, uh, it's like uh, in arbitration or mediation, you go with the numbers and negotiate and uh, uh, they give you a, like a midpoint, uh, uh, happy for uh, uh, appraisal district, happy for you kind of a deal. But um, what's your impression on that? Is that a number game or? Um, I think if it's, a, if it's a close call and both sides have uh, good evidence, I think they'll go in the middle, but, um, you know, if, if you have your proof, you know, if you have uh, photographic proof and documented proof, I, I think they won't uh, go in the middle, I think they'll go with you. Yeah. Uh, and if, likewise, if you don't have any proof, then they're not, also not going to go in the middle, they'll go 100% against you. That's right. But, you know, sometimes uh, uh, when I interviewed, uh, there's a... Uh, uh, chief communication officer, I brought him like a several properties in which like a flip-flop property next to each other, uh, they would appraise one for like say uh, $100 and other one they will do it for $92. So uh, my personal observation I want to tell you is like a more number game. You know, you fight on the numbers and then always you get a midpoint. But one thing uh, which I um, uh, like uh, is uh, uh, I've been doing this for like a 31 years. And in the old times, you know, you go there and wait for hours for your hearings, but now their system is a lot better, and uh, your time is a lot of saved. And uh, what's your observation on that, um, uh, their timing and um, how they serve you? I agree with you. I, I don't know what it was like before, but they seem to be run very, very efficiently, uh, especially for a government agency. Um, just signing up to get the to get the dates was great. Um, I remember when I had to fill out some forms, uh, going upstairs uh, and taking a number, there was somebody from, I think, the Harris County Constable's office who kept every, instead of just making sure everybody uh, was in line, he was giving out advice, he was very helpful, he was incredibly friendly, and I was just amazed. I don't think I'd seen a more friendly uh, constable than, than this man. And especially in an area where so many people don't know and they're confused and it could be frustrating with the stream of questions, he was incredibly patient. Yeah. Um, but I, I just found uh, the whole process and each step, um, you can tell.
tell they've really worked hard at making uh, the process more efficient and running smoothly. Yeah, that's good. You know, I gave them one suggestion, you know, which um, uh, was that uh, they say that the ARB uh, members, uh, they don't have any knowledge of your property. Uh, I was, uh, I suggested them that I think you need to e let them get educated on those properties so that they can make a right decision because sometimes they do not know about those properties and then uh, they kind of are like a get lost in my view. I have inter uh, uh, recorded uh, like a two different ARB uh, hearings. Uh, and um, I'm making this documentary based on those also because in one case uh, uh, they did not know anything uh, about it so they just threw a number and that uh, um, uh, wanted to close a case on that number but they would not listen uh, that okay you got two properties you are dealing next to each other they are flip-flop uh, built in the same years but they will not give you the same value for both so uh, that is one of the flaw in my view in the system. I don't know what your thought is on that. Uh, can you uh, give me your take on it? Yeah, I'll tell you there's, uh, just going this first time, I was educated that there's a lot of factors. Uh, for example, um, if there's a homestead on one property, what happens is that the, the value, there's a limit to how much you can increase the, uh, the appraisal value and so if, if you have someone that's homesteaded it for like 10 years, they're going to be much lower. So their, their appraisal value is much lower than yours, and, and it doesn't matter whether the properties are exactly the same. The other thing is that um, bec I guess because of technology and the Internet, the appraisal district is able to get so much information on each property. They know, you know, how many obviously how many times it's been sold, but they know how much it's been sold for. They know if any kind of building permits have been pulled. They even know, you know, if it's a building permit, what it was pulled for. Was it pulled for the kitchen or the bathroom and so forth? And so just from the, uh, the, the, the part of the property that was improved and how much was spent, um, they they can raise the appraisal value just based on the building per, on the uh, um, the building permit. Yeah, uh, the construction uh, permit, a remodeling uh, yeah, permit. Yeah, I that's call right. It. Yeah, they, they they are pretty good in that. You know, they send the people, they come and check it out, and they go to the city, get the permits and all that. They're very good on that. You know, but uh, uh, one thing uh, you you brought it up that you use O'Connor. Uh, in my case, I use Novalty also only just one time. And um, I did a lot better than Novalti would do, uh, and uh, I think we. Sh um, uh, I fully agree with you that it's better to do the research on your property because you are the only one who will know about your property. And if they take the proof and they take the documentation, it is easier to fight it on your own rather than hiring this company. You said before that you didn't have a good uh, experience with. Uh, the companies who fight for you. So, what's your last thought on it? Well, I, you know, I think uh, a company that that has uh, thousands and thousands of cases are just not going to take the time out to review each one ahead of time and get in contact with the customer and say, "Look, you know, do you have any photographs to help us? Do you have any documentation to help us?" You know, they're going to take what they got, and it's up to the person uh, that the customer to meet with them or talk with them, and I don't even know if they do that, but um, I think if you really want to get good service and you're hiring a company, I think at least you have to meet with them one-on-one -on -one and give reasons why, and if you don't have any reasons why, just, you know, why the, the appraisal is wrong, uh, let them know, but, um, you know, if you, if you have the time or if you have a large number of properties, I think it's better off to do it yourself, <clears throat> especially since most of the compensation for these companies are based on the amount of savings, if you're going to save a lot of money, you might as well do it yourself and, and maybe save a, you know, a couple hundred or a couple thousand dollars. Yeah. Are you are legal counsel for Houston First Corporation. What does the Houston First Corporation do? Houston First is a hospitality corporation. They manage the George R. Brown Convention Center along with three performing arts theaters, Jones Hall, Wortham, and Miller Outdoor Theater. Um, they're also responsible for driving tourism and conventions and so forth, so we have a huge sales team that, that 
uh, goes and meets with uh, event planners and convention planners. And then we uh, own the Hilton Americas Hotel, but that is run by uh, Hilton. Okay, so are you ready for the uh, Super Bowl? Yeah, we're ready. It's been planned uh, ever since the day it was awarded about uh, four or five years ago. Um, there's been a lot of planning going on. Uh, the, the convention center area is just absolutely reformed uh, with new hotels, you know, um, with kind of a convention district that we, we didn't have before in the other Super Bowl. I think the last Super Bowl, uh, they found out it was kind of a mistake to focus a lot of the entertainment on Main Street with the new light rail going down right in the middle of it. It didn't, you know, work out that good and it wasn't lasting long. But I think now with the convention district, it's actually a destination area with a lot of restaurants and, of course, Discovery Green. And I think the sustainability uh, after the Super Bowl will be tremendous. Well, hey, Mark, I want to compliment you because you were part of that team uh, with uh, Mayor Brown uh, that you people uh, really revitalized downtown. And I want to compliment you for your VN, uh, the, the people who you work together. Uh, you people did very good for the city. And today uh, we are uh, seeing the uh, uh, what you planted, uh, city of Houston, particularly the downtown area, uh, revitalized. And uh, that's a, uh, you know, I hope the people remember uh, you and other people, Mayor Brown and uh, your council people who did uh, extremely good job uh, to do all these uh, big projects, um, uh, Minute Maid Park, uh, Convention Center, uh, Hilton America. Well, you know, it's a lot of work by a lot of people. Um, and I think it just reflects the, the spirit of Houston and Houston's leaders. I want to share you something. My grandkids wanted to go on the metro uh, last week, and uh, we went on the metro and thought about you all, too, because what do you think the metro uh, did to the revitalized uh, uh, city of uh, Houston? you think it has helped a lot or not? Yeah, I think uh, it's really helped a lot. Uh, I think the the, I'd have to say the area it's helped a lot is the medical center because uh, parking was incredibly expensive in the medical center and limited and probably there's 38,000 people that are hired that have to go there so uh, what what the light rail offers is for people to park in a different location and easy access uh, to the medical center um, I think it's it's um, it's a challenge in the downtown area because uh, you know with two lines crisscrossing there uh, a lot of times uh, traffic is blocked uh, especially for an event at either Toyota Center or or the Georgia Brown Convention Center if you have light rail growing and a lot of people trying to park um, it can be a problem it, it really offers a challenge so I, I don't know what the solution is for downtown Final thought, uh, what's your future uh, political uh, 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 ambition? Are you coming back in politics? Or are you going to stay in your practice? Um, I'm, I'm happy where I am, but, um, you know, I wouldn't say no if there's an opportunity, I think, that presents itself. Um, I certainly would consider it. Yeah, that's good. Thank you very much for your time. Okay. Okay, yeah. you're welcome.